Hi everyone, I'm Bria from Edge Actuario, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different than I usually do. I am going to tell you a little bit about what I do in my job as an actuary every single day. So I think this will be a valuable video for you because when I was first starting out I actually had no clue what I would actually be doing in my actuarial role. So I think it'll be helpful for you to be able to get a sense of some of the things that I actually do and of course it's going to be different in every single job. I'm actually lucky to work at, well at least I think I'm lucky to work at a medium-sized company so I actually get experience in a lot of different areas because since there are fewer people in our area we actually get exposure to lots of different things. So like I said I'm in a, a medium-sized insurance company, it's actually life insurance in Canada and I'm in the corporate actuarial area and that means that I do a lot of the month-end reporting and all the financial reporting and stuff like that. So primarily I work with savings and retirement which is annuities and stuff for people that have retired and they'll get regular payments every single month or maybe every year depending on what they've decided but that will help cover some of their expenses. So that's the savings and retirement area but I also get exposure to the group insurance area which means your dental and health benefits that you might get through your employer and disability benefits. So if someone goes on disability because they were injured or can't work for some other reason they often can get regular payments to help cover some of their expenses since they're not working. So that's the group insurance side. So like I said, I'm lucky to be able to have experience with both of those even though I've only been in one position at my work so far. I've been there for about four years now and I'm moving to a different position soon. But even in this one area, I've got experience with two different kinds of insurance. And at a bigger company, that's not something that you would get because they have very specific roles for each person. So that's one thing I really like about being at a medium-sized insurance company. But anyway, like I said, at my job I do a lot of monthly reporting. And one of the main things that we do is calculate reserves. And basically a reserve is trying to figure out how much money we need right now to be able to cover all the payments and expenses and everything that we expect we'll have to make in the future. So you can probably imagine that that seems like a big task and I'm going to explain it a bit further so that you can actually understand that a bit better but we use a program called AXIS and AXIS is able to project tons and tons of cash flows all the way into the far future. So for example, if someone has an insurance policy, or in my case, a, a group insurance policy, or uh, an annuity, Axis will be able to take a whole bunch of assumptions and inputs and character characteristics of the policy that we've told it, and it will be able to project all the way out to the end of the policy exactly the time the timing of when we think we'll have to make those payments and any associated expenses. So this is a really powerful tool because it has to do that for thousands and thousands and thousands of policies all at once. And not just for policies, but it also has to do that for all of our assets. Because since we have um, so many cash flows going out and we have obligations that we have to meet in the future, we have to have money coming in to us and the way we do that is to buy assets. So this is bonds and prefs and private placements and, and things like that. And when we buy those, we get income from them every single month or, or sometimes every quarter. But that money is what we use in order to be able to cover all the expenses and the liability payments that we're going to have in the future, our policies. So Axis is able to project all the liability cash flows, which are the policies that we have, and it's able to project all the asset cash flows. And with that information, we're able to calculate a reserve. And basically what this means is that we're 
taking the rate of return that we earn on all of our assets and we're discounting all our liability cash flows at that rate, that interest rate, so that we are able to know how much money we need to hold or how many assets right now that we need to hold in order to be able to fund all the liabilities that we expect to pay in the future. So I know that is probably a bit confusing and I tried to generalize it a little bit and make it easier to understand and I probably didn't do the best job of it, but in general, that's how a reserve works. So a lot of my job is calculating these reserves and it takes quite a bit of time. Actually, my pretty much my whole job is based around calculating these reserves. It's not like we're constantly calculating them, but we need to do a lot of stuff in the axis model in order to make sure that everything in there is right. And that takes a lot of time. Okay, so since we have to keep these axis models up to date, that means that we constantly have to make sure all the assumptions that are in that model are correct. So when I say assumptions, what I mean is that we're going to consider different things for each policy, like the mortality rate, which means the probability that this person will die every year. So we have to make an assumption about when this person will die. Every single year we have to predict the probability that the person will die and we won't have to pay any, any more payments to them. So that's an assumption that we have in our models. We also have an assumption for lapse, which means a, a person might just not want their policy anymore and we have to take that into consideration when we're projecting all our cash flows because we don't want to overestimate or underestimate how many cash flows or how many payments we're going to have to make in the future. We also have to have an assumption for expenses. So just for our company to run and to manage all these policies and do all the work behind the scenes that needs to be done, there are a lot of expenses. So we have to project those expenses into the future and in order to do that, we have to make an assumption for that. So just things like that are really important in our models and we constantly have to make sure that they're always up to date. Well, not always, but we update them once a year, which takes time because we have to actually figure out what the right assumption to use is. So one of the things that we often do every year in my area is we do assumption changes. And it's only once a year, but we'll take time to figure out if our expense assumption is still accurate. Are all our policy assumptions accurate, like our lapse rate and our mortality? And I didn't mention this before, but we also have assumptions on our assets because we have to assume an interest rate and we have to assume a default rate and things like that. And those all have to be updated too and assets and stuff, managing our assets, that has an expense associated with it as well that we have to take into consideration. So in our area, we actually look at things like mortality and we see, okay, is our mortality assumption that we have in the model really accurate of what we're experiencing? And if it's not, we're going to have to update it because we want to be able to project our cash flows as accurately as we feel possible at that time. So to get these um, accurate, more accurate assumptions, what we have to do is studies. So we have to study the trends that we're seeing actually emerge in our data and compare it to the assumptions that we've set in our model and see if they're aligning. And if they're not, we're probably gonna have to make a change to our assumptions in the model so that everything's more accurate. So, that's one part of the job, but another major part of the job is just the monthly reporting. And every, every month we have to calculate our reserves, um, which usually takes about a week or so to get the reserves calculated. And there, there's a bunch of work you have to do after that to do all the reporting, but to actually get our model all run, all the assumptions, looking good, all the new data, and clean the data before we even get it into 
axis, well, we have to spend some time doing that and it, it does take about a week to get the results of, for our reserves. But after that, we have to make sure that the reserve seems reasonable and we have to do our reporting on the reserves. So one thing that our area does is the uh, source of earnings, which basically shows uh, the company how how our uh, area made money during the month. So when we project all our cash flows, our liability cash flows, for example, we have certain expectations, right? We have our assumptions. And if those assumptions don't align with reality, which is usually the case, it's impossible to get an assumption that's 100% accurate. But whenever that happens, there's a, a difference. Either we overestimated how much money we were going to need, or we underestimated how much money we were going to need. And that results in a, a gain or a loss for us, which means that we have to report that in the source of earnings because we want to be able to see where our money is coming from. And again, I know this is complex stuff, so it's really hard to explain and I'm trying to make it clear for you. But for an, as an example, if we had an, an assumption that 10 people, for example, were going to die next month and we would have we would be able to stop making payments to them. If only five people died, then we would have been underestimating how much money we had to pay out because we thought that 10 people were going to die, but instead only five people died. So that results in us still having to pay out money for an extra five people that we weren't expecting. So in that case, we be losing money because our assumption wasn't right, pretty much. So that, a mortality gain or loss, gets reported on the source of earnings and, and it's reported to the senior management. So things like that are what we have to do during month end to be able to confirm first that our reserves seem reasonable, but also to break down did we actually make money and where did the money come from or did we lose money and, and what assumptions were wrong that caused us to lose money. And when I say assumptions are wrong, I don't really mean that they're wrong. It's just that it's impossible to know the assumption 100%, basically. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a sense of our main responsibilities in the corporate actuarial area. But there are some other things that we do. Um, one of them is called DCAT, and that stands for Dynamic Capital Adequacy Testing. <laughs> Drew a blank there for a second. But what we do in when we do this is we basically take the assumptions that we have in our model and we make them way worse, one at a time. So we'll make our mortality assumption way worse, for example, and then we'll put it back and then we'll put our lapse assumption to be way worse and then we'll put it back. And what this does is it really increases our reserves a lot, usually, because, because our lapse assumption is way worse than we were expecting, so that will increase our reserves. And the purpose of doing DCAT is to be able to see the, the difference what our reserve was and what it would be if our lapse assumption was way higher, for example. And this is used for, for capital purposes because we can't just hold the amount of money that we need for reserves. We have to hold extra money just in case our assumptions are way off or something crazy happens in the market and the assumption just was so off that we need extra money because our reserves can't cover it. So when we do these tests, it really allows us to see what are the worst case scenarios and how much money would we need if one of these worst case scenarios actually did happen. So that's something we do once a year and it, it usually takes us about two, three weeks maybe. So it's not a major, major thing in my position, but it's definitely something that comes up every year. And another thing actually that I'm working on right now because I'm recording this in February and January is pretty much one of the most busiest times because of year end. And that means that we have to get the AA report done and completed. 
Uh, AA report is the appointed actuaries report. And this report has all the assumptions that we're using in our reserves in it. So it's a very, very valuable document and it's very confidential because those assumptions that we're using aren't to be shared with anyone. They're very confidential information. So putting this report together, as you can imagine, with all the assumptions that we're using, and ev it's basically outlining everything that we're using in our AXIS model. And it takes a lot of time to put that all together, uh, make sure that everything in it is accurate. And we also do a lot of results reporting in there too. So, so it does take some time and every year we spend probably about a month to a month and a half doing the AA report. Okay, so I think that pretty much sums up everything that I do in a year, I think. It was, it was pretty general and I know it probably sounds a bit confusing. If you have questions, you can ask in the comments. Um, but you're probably wondering what tools I use, what software do I use to do all this stuff? And, and what do I do use in my regular daily on-the-job work? Um, Axis is obviously a major, major tool that I'm using. Axis is used for everything in my job pretty much. We, we use it daily. And the other thing is Axis. Or not Axis, Excel. <laughs> um, with Excel, I'm using that pretty much every day. Everything that we do in Axis eventually gets exported to Excel so that we can more easily use the data and view it because it's not that easy to do in Axis. Um, and Excel allows us to use macros and VB, VBA macros and stuff like that. So if you're planning to become an actuary and you want to know the tools and, and things that you can do to help boost your career, I think one of the main things and one most important things would be to learn how to use Excel, learn how to use all the functionality of Excel. You need to know how to use things like VLOOKUPs and some ifs and pivot tables and things like that because we're constantly using data and it's always in Excel. So being able to use the functionality of Excel is really important. And I'd also recommend learning how to use VBA. And VBA is basically the programming language that you can use in the background of Excel to be able to do things automatically so that you don't have to. So if you're finding that you have to repeatedly do the same thing over and over again, which happens all the time in actuarial work, you'd probably just want to create a quick, a quick macro to do that for you so that it's way faster, way accurate, more accurate, and it just saves you having to do that all manually because that would be really annoying. So I really hope this video has helped you. I'm sorry that it was confusing. These are concept, complex concepts. So if you like this, please like the video, give it, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel and let me know if you're specifically interested in other things that I do on the job and any other tips and information that you'd like to know, leave it in the comments and I'll try to create a video about it. See you in the next one. Bye.